A 42 year old man has got constipation, vomiting, abdominal pain and decreasing um, and uh, uh, abdominal pain and uh, he has got a surgical scar and the x-ray has shown multiple air fluid levels which are suggestive of small intestinal obstruction. So typically in a post-operative setup, uh, uh, what do you want to basically do in this given case? So typical crescendo, decrescendo, abdominal pain along with the vomiting and the x-ray showing air fluid levels, they are all suggestive of small bubble obstruction. So immediate thing for you to do is to put a rail tube and give intravenous hydration is considered to be the clinical management of choice. Can you please uh, check with the second part students? Uh, they put on the discussion. Now, 24 year old man recently diagnosed with hypertension. Pulse rate is 82, BP is high and uh, sodium is 146 and potassium is low. So, whenever there is uh, hypokalemia along with hypertension, the single most important thing that should come to your mind is hyperaldosteronism. So one of the reasons for hyperaldosteronism is adrenal adenoma. So what is the clinical management of adrenal adenoma? So surgical resection is the management. So laparoscopic adrenalectomy has revolutionized without a need for doing an actual uh, laparotomy is what you have to basically appreciate. A 46 year old comes experiencing vomiting, constipation, abdominal pain and x-ray abdomen with multiple aid fluid levels. His surgical history shows there is an exploratory laparotomy then what is the most likely cause in post-operative period for the development of a small bubble obstruction? It is the additions which are the most common cause is what need to be remembered. A 22 year old, 3 month history of burning stomach pain and his mother has undergone medical imaging few years back and she is found to have a pituitary tumor. So multiple peptic ulcerations with the family history of pituitary tumor in the exam hall unless multiple endocrine neoplasia comes to your mind where pancreatic gastrinoma presenting with Zollinger Ellison and pituitary adenoma along with parathyroid adenoma the combination if it doesn't switch on in your mind you are out you are out of the game so that is called as a Indian MLE is uh, the ultimate uh, uh, thing that you are facing now a 41 year old arrives at the emergency and his wife states that on the day prior to admission he was having a sharp stabbing pain in the stomach and back and uh, he has tenderness in the right upper quadrant of the abdomen and the CT of the abdomen has been shown to you and there is also lipase, amylase elevation. You don't need to even look at CT, lipase elevated means pancreatitis. done, right? Are the Sigrama students there? Yeah, audible? So, uh, Initiation of IV fluids and uh, electrolyte replacement is all about uh, is what you need to basically understand. Now uh, a 38 year old typically has a pulse rate of 128 and he was given 2 liters of lactated ringer and his blood pressure is 108 and he has a pelvic compression elicits very severe pain and uh, what do you see? There is a blood at the external urethral meatus. So, what is the most likely possibility in his given case? So, in his given case, the most likely possibility could be a urethral injury. So, if you do the rectal examination, you will find a high riding prostrate so that it will give you an opportunity to assess uh, is it um, what type of uh, um, injury it is so that is the reason the rectal examination is the 
next important thing that you need to basically supplement here. A 31 year old woman brought to emergency after a motor vehicle crash. She is fully oriented and complaining of severe pain in the upper arm and the x-ray is showing a fracture of the lower end of the humerus. Lower end of the humerus fractures will lead to the radial nerve injury which is passing through the radial groove and a radial nerve injury typically lead to development of a wrist drop which is considered to be the typical answer. 38 year old who is on steroids for severe asthma undergoes laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Then uh, there is hyponatremia and creatinine elevation is there and uh, she complains of diffuse abdominal pain. What is the best next thing that you want to basically do in her given case? So somebody who had been on prolonged period of time on steroids has got an adrenal suppression. Such person when subjected to any stress like surgery will require a greater amount of steroid supplementation. Because endogenous steroid production got suppressed because of the exogenous steroid administration. So, if you don't take care to administer hydrocortisone preoperatively to him, uh, they will end up in adrenal crisis. So, in this given case, you need to start hydrocortisone and uh, additional fluids. So, I think you all are aware about the different types of steroids. You have hydrocortisone, dexamethasone, prednisolone. They all differ by virtue of the strength, right? So, you need to be quite sure to know what is the relative strength. If hydrocortisone is 1, dexamethasone is how much time potent than at prednisolone is 4 times, dexamethasone 10 times, all those things uh, you have to be very sure about. Now, doctor, uh, a 56 year old man is an intensive care unit for an open gastric bypass surgery, his temperature is 36.7 and his oxygen saturation is 98 percent, then what is the most effective clinical management of this uh, individual and uh, even his um, uh, ECG is being shown to you. So, typically um, um, ECG is showing Absence of P waves, which is suggestive of atrial fibrillation. Don't confuse for a preceding T wave with a P wave, right? So along there is no, there is hardly any condition where absent T wave is. I mean, there are conditions where the absent T wave will be there when T absolutely becomes flat in dyslipidemias. But in this case, recognize it is a QRS followed by T wave, but there is no P wave and that makes it a atrial fibrillation and in this hemodynamically unstable condition with a high respiratory rate the patient is having uh, the most important management is to do the cardioversion is what need to be remembered because he had a flash pulmonary edema that led to the rise of the, um, the respiratory rate. Now doctor, a 60 year old with 10 pack year smoking history returns with a recent CD scan of the abdomen and uh, uh, typically there is a palpable non-tender gallbladder in the right upper quadrant along with migratory thrombophlebitis and the patient has history of asthma and gout and uh, what do you see? You find two ducts which are dilated, this is called double duct sign which is typically seen in a periampillary carcinoma of pancreas. Pancreas has a head, body, tail. So, periampillary carcinoma. And uh, what is the way that you want to clinically manage? You need to look for doing a Whipple's procedure where you resect the duodenum, pancreas and then create bypass connections. So, the Whipple's procedure is considered to be the management of choice. Now, uh, a 40 year old is brought to emergency because of a motor vehicle crash, he is hemodynamically stable, his lower extremity attitude is being shown to you which shows dislocation of the hip, posture dislocation of the hip. If you do not give prompt treatment, what will happen to this dislocated head of the femur? One of the greatest uh, 
risk that is there is a vascular necrosis is what need to be basically remembered. So there is a comfort when question paper is uh, case based because you don't need a lot of mugging you know you are all smart doctors you are not that hard working uh, single liner uh, doctor so thanks to the diplomat of national board for introducing at least after uh, possibly if my memory goes back entrance examination for postgraduate medical uh, admissions has a history as long as 1985 so this is almost all 20 years no 30 years 30 years of history at least after 30 years we've opened up our eyes to start giving a logically inclined paper with less number of uh, rock grilling uh, questions eh? so that's a so that's the reason you should go more with a open presence of mind just like you are walking into a ward or into a casualty and going to manage the patients that attitude go to the exam little knowledge more common sense that is the secret for winning need pg please be very sure i don't know after you read the exam you should tell me for you for uh, uh, everyone it is the first time but of course since dnb is the mother of uh, already you have seen the dnb style of uh, questioning uh, so um, uh, 48 year old woman with right upper quadrant pain and fever of 39.2 and uh, she has a positive Murphy sign and uh, she is showing a gallbladder whose wall is inflamed and thickened with pericholecystitic fluid. So what do you want uh, obstruction of which duct will lead to development of gallbladder inflammation. Whenever cystic duct get obstructed there is a back pressure and um, uh, collection of the contents inside the gallbladder and that initiates a bacterial infection and lead to gallbladder inflammation is what need to be remember now 24 year old presents with chronic diarrhea that occurs intermittently and colonoscopy is showing no skip lesions but uniform inflammation which is suggest to only two inflammatory bubble diseases one is ulcerative colitis and Crohn's so a continuous inflammation which is not transmural but only mucosal is typically ulcerative colitis and in this given case partial colectomy is considered to be the management of choice so a bloody stool and the colonoscopy with continuous mucosal layer only inflammation imply ulcerative colitis and uh, medical therapy with mesalazine uh, is uh, considered to be the first line treatment and um, if it is a mild to moderate ulcerative colitis that is the treatment and uh, we also use infliximab and etc uh, uh, etc et uh, whenever the disease is severe and if the patient is refractory to the uh, sulfur drugs then uh, you need to basically treat them surgically partial colectomy is considered to be the treatment of choice in case of uh, ulcerative colitis 40 year old presents with emergency department with uh, she has not had bubble movement and passed flatus and she has got mild distress and she does not have rebound tenderness and uh, uh, typically uh, her bubble is showing distension diffusely but no air fluid levels so uh, it is more likely to be paralytic ileus which is not uncommon after any surgical procedure or dyselectylitemia etc etc now a 55 year old presents with a palpable abdominal mass past 3 weeks and abdominal CT with the contrast has been shown where there is a pancreas where is a renal cell carcinoma whatever be the stage of the renal cell carcinoma whatever be the stage nephrectomy is the treatment of choice so there's a reason you need to do a left radical uh, nephrectomy is considered to be the management of choice now you have been shown various receptors so which type of receptor mediates 
tactile discrimination. So fundamentally, you should know that uh, Meissner's corpuscles tactile two-point discrimination, Pacinian corpuscles mediate touch pressure and vibration, Merkel's dis mediate the light touch is what you have to ultimately remember. Then once more, this dermatomes, doctor. You should have a mental map about the dermatomes. Bicep, C5, C6, etc, etc. Right? Then, um, in the temporal sequence, what you are seeing is an action potential has shot. Then, which electrolyte parallelly will shoot? Which is the link between excitation and uh, muscle contraction coupling? Excitation, contraction, how are they coupled? The action potential brings excitation. Excitation releases intracellular calcium. And the rise of intracellular calcium will initiate the uh, muscle to undergo contraction. So, this is excitation, action potential. Contraction builds a tension. Between the two, it is a intracellular calcium concentration levels is what need to be remembered. How many of you answered that correctly? No? No? You didn't think that way? Oh, oh my God. Nah. No problem. I mean, in a sense, uh, ultimate answers will be very easy. Acha, you mean to say muscle tension or not, you are not sure about it. When the muscle contracts, tension builds. Already action potential is given. Between the two, what is there is intracellular calcium. That's then, but how are the question papers regularly? I am not coming for discussion few days back, sir. How are the quality of question papers? Okay. Okay. All right. So, uh, generally we take care to uh, get some of the good question papers well checked uh, for the correctness of the answer and well debated. And um, uh, this time very unexpectedly seasonal of no one expected in Andhra Pradesh that they will be chained so early to marriage with uh, need PG. So all are in embarrassed situation, but no way you cannot do anything nowadays. You cannot change currency, you cannot, uh, uh, you, you have no say to say no. Huh? You can't say I don't want my own PG, need PG, I won't write. You can't say, you have to write. There is a, that is what is most awaited all these years, right? So that's the reason a lot of students also worry that uh, regularly what they do is they start preparation in November and March is their goal or February ending is a goal. So that uh, phase of post ovulatory surge is missing. <laughs> Only direct LH surge and then ovulation. So too quick. So, when calcium uh, uh, is released on the storage site, uh, it binds and uh, brings a conformational change and that's how excitation contraction coupling happen. Now, this is the autonomic nervous system. So, you know, sympathetic, parasympathetic. Sympathetic, postganglionic, everywhere it is norepinephrine. But what is an exception? Typically in certain areas, postganglionic sympathetic is acetylcholine and uh, they are the typical sweat glands where the postganglionic sympathetic is a acetylcholine is what you have to basically appreciate. A 9 year old girl is admitted with fever of unknown origin, bilateral cervical lymphadenopathy is there and her serum ferritin is 6000 and the bone marrow biopsy has been done. So, it is showing a normal population of histiocytes and being CD1 positive and S100 positive is the most important clue, not the histology actually. So, uh, for you to make a diagnosis of Langhansel histiocytosis is what you need to basically remember. A patient has malabsorption, has undergone deodinal biopsy and uh, there is uh, a flattening of villi which is typical in case of uh, the celiac disease. So, anti-endomysium antibodies are the ones which are typically positive. A full-term newborn 
develops respiratory distress after birth. And oxygen saturation was 90%. There is a tachycardia. Core temperature was 37.6. So what do you see here? You are finding a narrow QRS complexes with tachycardia. So narrow complex tachycardia unless proven otherwise is supraventricular tachycardia. So it is a symptomatic supraventricular tachycardia which needs a emergent clinical management is what you need to remember. Wide QRS is VT. PSVT is narrow QRS. Narrow QRS is PSVT. Supraventricular tachycardia is narrow. Wide, broad complex tachycardia, BCTs. Broad complex tachycardias are VTs. And how to differentiate SVT? From a VT with aberrant conduction, there is one more table, presence of couplets, etc., etc. Uh, that also you should master. Hmm? So many times we discuss that and uh, you go to SVT, VT. How to differentiate SVT from a VT with aberrant conduction? Suppose if there is aberrant pathway that directly connects the atria and ventricles bypassing the AV node, any VT will retrogradely conduct back into atria and that can confuse you with SVT. So SVT and VT with aberrant conduction need to be differentiated. There is a way of doing that that we discussed in cardiology. You need to review that in the video library. A newborn develops seizures, tetany, serum calcium is low and the physical examination is showing the presence of hypertelorism and micrognathia. Right? So in this case, it is a classical case of Dijot syndrome, it has got an anti-mongoloid slant of the eyes. Mongoloid is like in Down syndrome, anti-mongoloid slant, short filtrum, mandibular hyperplasia, low set ears. Don't check your ears after going home. Huh? So, uh, actually when we check in the mirror, uh, we find all abnormalities that we studied in uh, uh, some anomaly of what we study in the Harrison. So don't do that. So and that too you are in a very bad shape because of the forthcoming meet PG. Then you will start recognizing that you are Downs plus Turners plus Williams plus uh, Mayer, Rokitansky, Kastner, Hosner. So that becomes terrible life, right? A large for gestational age, um, born to a gestational diabetic and has respiratory distress and an echocardiogram is shown. So what is the important uh, cardiac disorders that you find in babies born to the diabetic mothers? It, you have a interventricular septum which has undergone hypertrophy. So a septal hypertrophy is a very common defect that you see in the babies born to the diabetic mothers. A newborn is found to have an EKG which is being shown. And uh, what is the possible maternal history associated with this condition? So what do you see here? There is a P, QRS and T. Then you have a P but there is no QRS which is dumped which is a heart block. So typically heart block is an associated thing when the mother has got SLE. So there will be antero antibodies which will be responsible for a congenital heart block in the babies born to the mothers who have got SLE. That's how you need to basically extrapolate uh, your basic gyan into MCQs and uh, answer it contextually, right? Then uh, a 16 year old adolescent has come for a root canal treatment and he said that there is a history of heart murmur, there is a short systolic murmur, 2D echo is showing the prolapse of mitral valves. So typically mitral valve prolapse is, uh, is it an indication for antibiotic prophylaxis is the question. If there is no associated MR, if there is only a mild MVP, um, uh, the recommendation in an asymptomatic mitral valve prolapse guy is to not do any endocarditis prophylaxis during dental procedure is what you have to basically understand. A six month old infant found to have tachypnea, cyanosis, and upper respiratory tract infection, nasal flaring, normal breath sounds, 
and uh, you have taken a chest radiogram. What do you see? Figure of eight appearance, snowman appearance, which is seen in anomalous pulmonary venous circulation. Anomalous pulmonary venous circulation. Can you give me the board? So typically in the heart, the pulmonary vein is supposed to drain into left atrium. Instead, what pulmonary vein is trying to do is there is a superior vena cava which is coming and draining into right atrium. So this will typically the left and right pulmonary veins they both combine, they form a common vein that drains into SVC or sometimes directly into the heart, right. So because that common vein uh, drains, pul common pulmonary vein drains into the right side along with the incoming SVC, that leaves that figure of 8 or a snowman appearance. is what you have to remember, okay. So that is a typical context. Uh, now a 9 year old girl on examination there is a systolic murmur, split second heart sound and EKG is being shown. First what is the axis? The QRS in the lead 1 is looking down and QRS in the lead 3 is looking up. When the QRS is looking down and in 1 and 3 they are looking towards each other it is a right axis deviation, right. So typically what you have is a right axis deviation. Then uh, there is a T wave inversion in the V1 and V2 which are the right sided leads. So there is a right ventricular hypertrophy. Then there is a RSR pattern in the lead V1 which is suggestive of right bundle branch block. So typically it is a case of um, uh, right axis deviation um, with the uh, right ventricular conduction delay leading to RSR pattern and uh, uh, associated with ASD of secondum type. If it is a ASD of primum type, there will be a left axis deviation. So how will you recognize left axis deviation? Once more, if you lead, take the lead 1, QRS is looking up effectively and lead 3, it is looking down like a valley and they left each other. That is left axis deviation. So left axis deviation is equal to primum, right axis deviation is equal to secondum. If you answer that, my soul will be resting peacefully in the graveyard. So, a 6 year old with acute pyelonephritis, decreased humeral pulsations, webbed neck is there, then uh, what do you want to, uh, what you are seeing here, horseshoe kidney, horseshoe, this is in continuity right, lower poles, is a typical feature which is seen in case of the Turner syndrome, horseshoe kidney. Now typically there is a kid who has got non exudative conjunctival uh, congestion along with a strawberry tongue Kawasaki disease. So typically you need to do echocardiogram to rule out a coronary aneurysm which is the underlying cause for a heart attack in a pediatric patient who is having Kawasaki disease is what need to be remembered. A 3 year old she denied any history of constipation or vomiting or urinary symptoms but urinary vinyl mandelic acid are normal and on physical examination she found a non-tender firm spherical mass in the left paraumbilical area in a 3 year old child while giving bath. That is a classical story of Wilms tumor. If you take neuroblastoma, vinyl mandelic acid everything would have elevated and for that matter neuroblastoma is a small tumor not as big as a Wilm. Okay? So that is very, very important. 
A patient developed an acute self-limiting papillosquamous rash with, uh, uh, which is preceded by this uh, uh, lesion, right? So, what is it basically because of? So, pityriasis rosea is, uh, that is a herald patch. So, self-limiting papillosquamous eruption of 6 to 8 weeks of duration is a typical feature. Herald patch is what you have seen. And one of the theories say that human herpes virus 7 is underlying viral etiology for the development of pityriasis rosea is what need to be remembered. A 34 year old, waxing and waning severity of the lesions, hyperkeratosis, ankyanthosis, focal spongiosis, accentuated reta ridges. So, after giving so many clues and showing you the lesion, you should be, is it psoriasis? Think twice. Typically, the lesion over here. Yeah, good. Because of the acanthosis, you felt like that, right? But waxing and waning severity, scaling and itching and burning. I mean, we know only five, six names in dermatology. So, it is uh, typically an example of seboric dermatitis. In small kids, infants, it is called cradle cap, right? So, it will aggravate in summer, right? Uh, sorry, uh, uh, typically um, the uh, lesion uh, is a winter born lesion more often. Parkinson's patients will also show seboric dermatitis, antifungal can help and it will recur is what need to be remembered. 87 year old, progressive non papular papillar, atraumatic ichamosis, periorbitally located, they are called raccoon's eyes. So, which type of amyloidosis will lead to periorbital ichymosis and pinch purpurae? They are called. If you pinch, it will become purpuric lesion. So, it is typically AL type of amyloid is known to lead to development of periorbital ichymosis and pinch purpurae. Amyloidosis is one topic examiner love to ask the questions. So, once more, this is all the old DNB question bank that we discussed. It is more or less a repeat of the same issues. Only thing is a question of revision and application. A male alcoholic comes with a cutaneous lesion, which is because of the photosensitivity. So, blisters, erosions, milia from the exposed parts of the face is in an alcoholic is typical of porphyria cutanea tard is what need to be remembered. Once more, porphyria is a topic that you need to drill it down, right? Then histopathology is showing corpus, corpse ronde and grains, which is a typical feature in Darrier's disease. And uh, dyskeratotic, acantholytic keratinocytes with the cytoplasmic clearing, which are located in the granular layer, is typically called coarse rand. And they are called rand because of the round shape is what need to be recognized. Now, what is this finding showing? It is showing the bleed typically in the area of the anterior communicating artery. So, it is the anterior communicating artery aneurysmal bleed. Anterior communicating artery is the most common location for finding aneurysms. Then, what is this neuroimaging showing? It is a extradural hematoma. If it is the intradural, it will be subdural, it will be like a complete uh, stretch of it, not a biconvex. Uh, uh, shaped. So, it can cross sutures, but not the dural attachments because it is extra dural. Now, the radiological sign that you are seeing typically is diagnostic uh, of a diffuse cerebral edema. So, whenever there is any injury to the brain, initially the insult to the brain will present like a diffuse uh, cerebral edema during which the patient is in a semi comatose states. It is also called white cerebellum sign. Then uh, what are the commonest primary neoplasm in the adult typically shown in this location? So, you have ventricle. So, typically in this location. So, it is a glioblastoma multiforme which is a supratentorial mass lesion, most common supratentorial lesion in the case of the 
adult so is what you need to remember now for a cavitating lesion with a lot of surrounding edema what is the most important uh, uh, differential diagnosis granuloma multiple sclerosis or an anaplastic astrocytoma they all can present like a ring enhancing lesion which you are seeing typically in this uh, uh, ct is what you need to understand now in the lesion shown what is the nerve most commonly affected in case of the herpes zoster it is the frontal nerve which is most often uh, affected um, followed by uh, the lacrimal and nasociliary nerves now uh, in the lesion shown what is the keratitis is because of this is called ring abscess so typically ring infiltrate ring abscess in a patient is a typical feature of acanthamoeba keratitis is uh, the spotted now the lesion shown is showing coepis nodules which is suggest of granulomatous uveitis so in walked koinagi harada tb or sarcoidosis uveitis is granulomatous that's what you need to appreciate so bucosis nodules and coepis nodules typically in the limbal area the nodules are coepis in the other area it is bucosa uh, then what is atkins diet earlier they were decreasing fat but later on they discovered fat is not the culprit you can drink ghee you can eat ghee you can eat laddu anything you can eat you won't become fat but if you eat potato you will become like potato so that is what uh, they discovered and they said low carbohydrate uh, low calorie diet unfortunately life has become so miserable that we have money to eat but we don't have courage to eat so uh, and every time we eat we calculate our weight and the food weight that we are eating and uh, uh, yeah so that's a challenge of being humans in this modern era anti mitochondrial antibodies where do you see positive primary biliary cirrhosis a middle aged woman with a severe pruritus with jaundice is equal to primary biliary cirrhosis if the clinical vignette comes in the tomorrow's exam then uh, macrovesicular fatty liver where do you see diabetes obesity and alcohol typically uh, they are all macro but fatty liver of pregnancy is a microvesicular uh once more there's a list that the list of 10 here 10 there you have to try to remember then uh, uh there are different channelopathies some of them are sodium calcium potassium magnesium so you must know which channelopathy belongs to which channel problem once more another table that you need to run through huh? then perineoplastic cerebellar degeneration typically is a feature in hodgkins ovarian breast cancer and small cell cancer there there is a par, there are yo yo antibodies which lead to development of the para i mean the cerebellar degeneration paraneoplastically so that is not a feature of colonic carcinoma in chronic kidney disease what is the most common cause of death chronic kidney disease predisposes to atherosclerosis that lead to development of ischemic heart disease is what you need to appreciate then in a multiple myeloma if there is a asymptomatic patient what is the best treatment that you want to offer if it is a symptomatic regular follow up there is a very important uh, study that uh, patient should be given a option to die himself rather than with your chemotherapy so asymptomatic if he is don't do anything that's a that's a plan then uh, which anti tubercular drug can lead to interstitial nephritis and thrombocytopenia rifampicin is the one which is typically used kusumal is not a feature in cardiac tamponade but in constrictive pericarditis what is kusumal normally during inspiration jvp is supposed to collapse when the blood flows into the heart but if there is a constrictive pericarditis the jvp doesn't collapse in spite of inspiration it remains prominent whether it is expiration or inspiration which is then called kusumal which is a feature of constrictive pericarditis rather than cardiac tamponade is what need to be remembered now doctor uh low complement levels are not a feature in hemolytic uremic syndrome then if you take 
post infectious glomerulonephritis that lead to low complements but within 6 weeks it will normalize if it doesn't normalize it is against the diagnosis of PSGN so that is one funda which we discussed many times in glomerulonephritis then uh, CD19, CD22, CD103 positive monoclonal B cells and there is a mass spread megaly typically based on the CD markers it is a case of hairy cell leukemia classical markers are CD19, 20, 22, 79B but not CD21 because it is a late B cell marker once more leukemias is a miserable topic because of CD markers and you need to know how to master that then uh, pulmonary artery involvement in Takeyasu typically is called type 4 very disgusting question why it's called type 4 type 4 is whenever it is dilated and involves dilatation of the length of the iota and including its major branches then it is called type 4 and Takeyasu arthritis typically is associated with uh, type 4 is uh, the point then anemia of chronic disease typically you have a decreased serum iron uh, but uh, increased ferritin that differentiates it from iron deficiency pneumococcal vaccine is typically indicated in renal failure sickle cell disease diabetes um, uh, in all these scenarios uh, um, uh, it is very much indicated um, CRF, cirrhosis of liver, etc., etc. Now, 30 year old with sweating, shivering, fever, diarrhea, all systemic clinical features along with mental confusion should immediately point you towards Legionella pneumonia, which typically has that sort of a history. So, this is in short for uh, the image based question of the mock test.